Can everyone see the presentation okay? Yep. 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 Yeah. Brian, does that look like everyone who's going to be joining us? Um, I believe so. We're just going to go through uh, a quick quick roll call because there's a couple names I um, don't see. Um, or, or a couple people didn't type in their names. I did hear Dean, correct? Dean, you're with yes, us? Yes, you did. How are you? All right. Good, good. Good to have you aboard. I see Angel, um, Amish, Howard, John, um, Kevin, uh, what organization are you with, Kevin? Can you remind Jana me? Branch. I'm, I'm with Howard, Jenna Branch. Oh, okay, great, with Howard. Um, Jenna Branch, perfect. Uh, Michael, Scott, Stacy, and Tom. Is there anyone else that, that we missed? No, okay, that sounds great. Yeah, I think one or two more people might join, but they can they can catch up uh, and get caught up. Great stuff. Uh, I appreciate how busy everyone is as well, so I don't want to keep you hanging on longer than uh, you need to. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, this is uh, our promised uh, FIP 101 webinar that we talked about at the, um, the Boston Seafood Show. This was in response to uh, requests from a number of people on the Supply Chain Roundtable for more information and guidance on how to actually uh, initiate and implement a fishery improvement project. So we've been busy working on this presentation um, using uh, the, the information we have on our toolkit. And really the purpose of this is to give you a step-by-step -step approach um, sort of guidance. Yes, yeah, this is the webinar's over. I'm just going to grab you and Scott. This webinar, the presentation is yeah, over at noon. Whoever's talking, they just let you know it's uh, it, it's broadcasting across the uh, the webinar. So the slides will be made available afterwards, uh, and hopefully you'll find them useful as a guide to supplement the, the actual detailed information that we have on our uh, toolkit webpage. If there's, this is the first time we've done this. If there's any feedback, you know, we all really appreciate any feedback. If there's anything extra you want, let us know, and we can, we can add it in. If you think there's stuff that we're going into too much detail for, again, let us know. We are very open to, to get some uh, constructive feedback on this. So, why are we here today? Well, really, it's, there's two sort of key reasons. Number one is to gain a better understanding of uh, why FIPS are important in seafood sourcing, how they operate, how to actually get a FIPS started, how they are measured on their progress and their performance, which is a, a key part of uh, fishery improvement pro projects, and how to how to enable this knowledge to actually be implemented. So it's all very well understanding it, but how do you put this into practice on a sort of a day-to-day -day operational level? So just a, you know, a, a very brief overview. Some of you may well know this, but we just for completeness, what are they? Well, it's, it's an alliance of people who are involved or interested in uh, a particular fishery, uh, for example, buyers and retailers, suppliers, NGOs, who actually want to firstly encourage improvements in the management of the, uh, of the fishery at a government or intergovernment level, but at the same time provide motivation for changes to be made on the water at the fishery level. For example, making changes that can have a, an, you know, an immediate or a, a quick um, impact, for, such as reducing bycatch or minimizing environmental impacts through changing the way 
uh, the fishery operation is is taking place. So it's a kind of a two pronged approach there. One of which is the kind of the, the bigger strategic level, and the other one is actually on the water changes. Um, you know, FIPS should be considered a tool, uh, you know, that can be used on a voluntary basis that are actually going to be used to make improvements or address particular challenges uh, in a fishery. How do they work? Well, you, you essentially what you're doing with a FIP is you're taking a fishery at a, a, a low level of environmental performance and over time doing a stepwise improvement approach and raising its performance up to a higher level. That really is you know, as simple as it gets. What the, the benefit of having a, a fishery improvement project or a FIP that is supported by um, you know, the NGO community is that instead of walking away from a fishery that has challenges because it's red rated, for example, what you're doing is you're saying, it may well be red rated at this point. It may well have a low environmental performance, but by working with that fishery and improving it, and it's still being acceptable to be bought and sold, in the supply chain, we're actually doing a, you know, a positive rather than just walking away from a red rated fishery. And so it's important here that there is retail uh, and uh, sort of food service support for FIPS because it enables these uh, fisheries that would otherwise be maybe not, not able to be bought by them to continue to be bought and sold. Every, you will see that every FIP is different. Um, on, on a fundamental level, sometimes a FIP will work towards a third party certification. For example, a FIP could be aiming for condition free MSC certification. Others may be looking at uh, a, a maybe a more nuanced or a more particular uh, factor. It might just be something that it might just be trying to reduce bycatch, for example. And there is a difference between these types of FIPs, which we'll cover later. But whatever the aim, whether it's third party certification or just an improvement in a particular area, and it all does depend on where you're starting from, they all follow the same structured path. It does take into account the needs of the fishery as well as the stakeholders involved in the fishery. When you consider how FIPS actually work, I found this quite helpful to, to define the, the sort of the two key areas in how FIPS work in terms of an operator level. So if you were if you were looking to get a FIP up and running, this is I think this is a, a way you can consider it. The two distinct stages are the first one, which is what we call the FIP initiation, or the, this is the process part. This is the building blocks on getting everything ready for actually running a FIP, actually making the improvement changes on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's the initiation. If you hear us talking about FIP initiation, this is, we consider it the building blocks uh, of getting the FIP ready to go. Uh, and once you've got that, once you've got everything ready to go, the next part is the implementation, FIP implementation, which is the actual action. And this is actually putting, uh, putting it into practice and getting it going. And what you will end up, if, it, if you follow the pathway and improvements are going as according to uh, how they should be, you will end up with a successfully improved fishery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through, uh, walk through each of these two steps here and show you what they each made of. Now, all this information is available in, in a bit more detailed form. What I'm trying to do here is make it as accessible as possible. And, and I can work through this uh, at some length, try to pick out the key points and you know, go through the toolkit myself to find out where the, maybe, the, maybe some of the confusing terminology is. So I, I do hope it's successful. So FIP initiation, how do you initiate a FIP? The hyperlink below, and please don't forget you have to jot it down because we will be sharing the slides with you, is, is a more detailed document called FIP initiation. Or in, and that will, that will contain some more of the information here. But there are three steps in this first part. Uh, step zero, which is exploring a FIP, then you move on to launching the FIP and then forming the FIP. Now, they may sound quite confusing, and but what I've done is I've tried to go break these down into the steps, and we'll do that over the next couple of slides. So, exploring a FIP. So this is the very first start of it, and there are four sub steps within this one and what i'm going to again try to capture them here just so you can see what they are and then the next slides will go through each of these one by one so this is the first part oops uh, this this is conducting a supply chain analysis which is the very first step in in bips 
the information here will help the FIP leader. This is the person who's actually taking the lead for the FIP, understand who's involved in the fishery and essentially identify where the, 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 the potential market levers are. Now, you, if you are buying from other suppliers who are buying from the fishery, you might have some of this information in your internal um, systems. For example, you might know who is, who is involved in the fishery because you're buying from a number of people. Uh, alternatively, there are a number of information sources here that will assist you in finding out who else is involved in the fishery. Now, given some of the examples down here, for example, Globefish, FAO Stats, uh, Eurostat, and there's also market research reports. And these are things that um, SAP can assist in sort of pointing you in the right direction. This, this leads directly into the next step, step two, which is identifying potential participants for the FIP. Uh, and what we call here, is, we call this a stakeholder mapping exercise. And this identifies uh, the, the, the whole range of potential participants who you could work with and influence, or who may actually be very willing participants in the FIP. Now, as I say, the supply chain analysis really is the first step on that. It will inform this exercise. So it might be that you're the only person involved in it. You might be the only people buying from a fishery, and it might be that you're the only people who, who are going to be involved in a FIP. Or it might be that there's a number of different people involved in this, and, and you actually want to reach out to them and see if you can form uh, a, collaborate, a collaborative approach. Um, we recommend if there are two companies work, two or more companies working together to address improvement needs in a, in, a, in a fishery, a formal partnership might be most appropriate, but it's up to you. You can also have an informal collaboration if you're wishing to work on a number of different FIPs, a number of different companies as well. Again, there, there is information on uh, this in that document. Step three is defining the scope of the FIP and naming it. And, and this is quite important because the, the name of the FIP really should reflect the scope of what you're doing. Are, are you looking at multiple fisheries? Is it just one fishery? Is it a part of a fishery? Um, it, it, it may depend on the, the, the scale of the challenge that you're looking at. Um, you will have an idea of this. For example, you, you, know, you know what fisheries you're sourcing from, and you can look at things like fish source, for example, to give an, get an idea of uh, where some of the challenges lie. And this is why we've requested, some, if you're able to assist us with, if you're able to assist us with you know, where you're sourcing from, we're able to um, make sure that we have fish source profiles for all of these fisheries. Now, you know, we, we have a definition of a, a fishery and a given example there, Atlantic Cod, Barents Sea, Norway Bottom Shore. And that, that gives you an idea of the kind of the level of detail that's needed for the name of the firm. This is very much a simple step, but it just assists everyone in knowing what we're all talking about. The final step in this first preliminary Explorer FIP stage is a drafting a pre-FIP plan. And this is all about making, it, 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 no, making the knowledge that you are going to be working on a FIP uh, available to customers, other stakeholders, to let them know what you're doing. You know, we are interested in a FIP in this area. We are looking at this. We're working with these participants. You know, we don't know what the scale of the challenge is necessary at this point because we haven't done a, you know, a full evaluation. But we are, you know, we're looking at doing this. It, it's really important because it, it, it provides people with a heads up that you, you're looking at an issue. And it will give you time while you're getting all the other pieces of the puzzle pulled together. So you can very much say to a customer, um, you know, we are looking at this FIP and we hear it is a pre-FIP plan, which is a structured way of setting out what you're doing. Now, we have a template and guidance for doing this. It's not, it sounds laborious, but it's actually structured quite clearly. And it should be quite straightforward to, to fill out this, this document using the information that you know about the fishery. What it does is it, it puts a marker down to say, yep, we are looking to take this forward. So that's step zero. The next one is... Step one, launch a FIP. And it has two components to this. Uh, again, we'll, we'll zip through these. The first part is conducting a formal fishery evaluation. Now, this is where you actually identify what are the, sustain the environmental sustainability challenges in the particular fishery or fisheries that you're looking at. Uh, so it says, you know, it could be that bycatch is particularly important as is habitat destruction, for example, or there is no data at all on the stock level. So you want to clearly identify what they are. Now, no one's expecting you guys to do this off your own back. You know, this is this is something that is usually carried out by a third party, um, you know, an expert in the fishery in question. And it's done by a standardized and thorough assessment methodology. Now, 
the type of evaluation you use may depend on the, the ultimate end goal and we'll talk about comprehensive versus basic FIPS in a little bit in a little bit later but some of the options for example there are the marine stewardship council pre-assessment you know that is a, a standardized and thorough assessment methodology there are cabs out there who are you know it's this their job they do this on a regular basis you can also use a fish source.com profile again it does depend on where you're going to go with it ultimately if you were looking at a feed fish, for example, you might want to consider something like EFO RS. Uh, and if, if you were doing an aquaculture improvement plan, for example, then you know MSC wouldn't be relevant there. But you can see, you know, there are there are things out there that can be done for this. So I said I'd mentioned the difference between comprehensive and basic FIPS. Um, comprehensive FIPS are more detailed, and they will address all of the environmental problems or challenges found in a fishery. Whereas basic FIPS, only looking at a, a subset of environmental problems and any efforts in the improvement are focused on those areas. So it could be one particular issue or it could be a number of smaller issues, but it's not looking at addressing everything. It's not looking at necessarily taking a fishery all the way up to a third party certification. Basic FIP, you know, it should be considered a good entry point for some fisheries who are maybe at a very poor level of environmental performance. Uh, you know, there are a number of differences between them, but the key differences are that it's the level of detail that the, the, uh, across the whole whole process. This table here gives a, a bit of a, a an overview of it. You can see I won't I won't linger on this one, but you can see that a comprehensive bit, for example, uses uh, the MSC standard for a pre-assessment and a scoping document that is made publicly available. It has you know the objectives are time bound objectives. Um, looking at um, getting to an unconditional pass of the MSC standard, uh, and also the, um, the 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 independent audits of performance uh, are much more stringent in a comprehensive FIP. Now it depends what you what you want to do. I mean, SFP is supported with both basic and comprehensive FIPs. We would like to see basic FIPs evolve in time to. Um, you know, maybe the key improvements, maybe that are really holding them back, and then evolve into a comprehensive FIP. But um, you can see the difference there. It, it does depend on the fishery in question, but it might also depend on what your customers are requiring. Once you have that uh, fishery evaluation, the next step is uh, the, the, the deficiencies that you have identified are, are made public. Now this is this can be done using two alternative approaches. The first one is just purely making the MSC pre-assessment public, um, or maybe just the improvement needs and the recommendations section. You don't have to put the whole thing. Pre-assessments are confidential unless the the owner of them wishes to make them public. That's probably the most straightforward approach. And if you're going for an MSC pre-assessment approach, not only do you have the, the added benefit of having a number of um, cabs out there with the experience of running the pre-assessment, but it also makes this step pretty much automatic. An alternative is developing a white paper. Now, this, this is something that states the sustainability challenges of the fishery and the proposed solution. So it's very similar uh, to an MSC pre-assessment, though it's something done in a slightly different process. The pre-assessment is a much more systematic evaluation of the fishery against the MSC standard itself, which is pretty self-explanatory, whereas the white paper is a scoring document and it is described much more broadly um, and the gaps are generically identified. We do have a template for a white paper if you want them. So I, I'm looking at this, you know, my, my personal opinion, it would be that the MSC pre-assessment would, would just be a lot of it, a, a much of an easier way of doing it. Not saying you have to do it that way, but it would just, it, it, it ties up these two steps quite nicely. So you've got the information now, you, you've got um, what the challenges are in the fishery. The, the next step or the final step in this um, the initiation uh, part of it is actually forming the FIP. And you'll see here there's there's five sub steps to that. The first one is um, sharing the information, the fishery evaluation and the recommendation materials with the FIP. Now these are these may seem laborious, but they they they've sort of laid out clearly to show that these are these are nothing that you should be scared of. These are just process steps that keep everyone involved in the process up, up to date and up to speed and brought in. So this is essentially circulating the evaluation report and all the white papers of the FIP participants you've identified. Now, you know, it, we suggest it's done electronically so everyone has time to go through it and see what they're buying into. And it must be done in advance of the next step in this process, which is the face-to-face -face meetings. Now, we, we recommend having bilaterals 
a discussion with participants to make sure they're engaged in the process and they understand what the challenges are and what the, the potential solutions are. And this, this is a very useful step because it helps you gauge what any potential obstacles might be, if any. Next step, pretty easy, is actually meeting in person. And this is to go through um, you know, the, re the issues, the recommendations, and to agree on what the goals are for the work plan. You know, this, is, this is what the challenges are. These are the recommendations of things we need to do. Are we all in support, or are we all agreed on what needs to happen and how it can happen? This is, a, this is the key one. This is the core element, the work plan. And this, is, this document sets out exactly what is required for solving the identified gaps on the assessment at a time framed at the activity level and for calculating any budgets that are needed and to assign roles and responsibilities with the participants. So who, who does what, when and where. All the FIP participants have to agree on it. That, that's key for keeping it all together, making sure that the FIP is tightly um, structured. We have a, a, work, a detailed work plan template plus guidance for filling that in uh, that is available and can be used. Now, that is private. That is for you. Um, that, you know, that, that is for the FIT participants to, to look at, to monitor and to work to. However, a required component of Credible FIPS is a public work plan. And this is, th this is for people who are observing, maybe the retail customers or potential customers, other NGOs, the funding body, informed on the plans and progress. Uh, this is you know, essentially a summary of the detailed work plan. It's taken directly from the detailed work plan, and it sets out what's going to be carried out in the next 12 months or so. We also have a public work plan template and guidance available. And these are, you can see the underline, these are hyperlinks taking you directly to the documents. In terms of um, the FIP costs, uh, step four is adopting a FIP budget. Now, there are essentially two separate cost areas when you're setting up a FIP. The first one is the process costs. Uh, these are the costs associated with developing the scoping document, the, the, the meetings, developing the work plan, etc. Pretty much everything up to this point. And the second part is the implementation costs. And this is this is the budget that's going to be required to actually make the improvements. Now, the former cost, the process cost, which is like I say, everything up to this point is reasonably standard. In the cost of a pre-assessment, for example, and meetings and developing the time required to developing a work plan, it, the, the, I would say, you know, they're reasonably standard. Um, we could probably give you a, a you know a rough ballpark figure uh, for that. I, I would say at the top of my head, uh, and you know uh, this is very much just purely for guidance. And if anyone wishes to um, step in from SAP, I, I think you're looking at you know ten to tens of thousands of dollars for getting something uh, up and running in the, in this in this area. This sort of up to this point. The latter cost, the implementation cost, will very much depend on the type and the extent of the improvements required. It's very difficult to give any sort of ballpark figure for this one um, until you have the, the detailed work plan. Now, the budget is required uh, as part of a FIT process, and it needs to be adopted by the FIT participants. We do have a, a fully um, workable budget template, uh, and again, I've linked there. So it sets out, you know, when you have the information in the work plan, it tells you how to take that forward into a, into a FIP budget. Financial support for FIPs, you know, the, the funding for a FIP may be available from national and international grant bodies. Um, but the first place to look is within the supply chain with a view to cost sharing. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, FIPs are becoming, a, you know, fast becoming a normal part of doing business. And it really is, you know, it needs to be seen as an accepted cost uh, of getting fisheries up to a level that are sustainable and there for the, for the long term. However, there are, you know, previous external funders of FIPS are included, but I've, I've added a list there and some links to them that may be uh, doing some FIP funding going forward. But I think it's probably the safest way to assume this is entering this process, ex assuming no external funding. To see where where that takes you but you know uh, we wanted to give you some ideas of the people who have funded things in the past the final part of this um the whole fit implementation is the getting explicit commitments from the participants now this is now you've got the participants you've got the work plan you've got the budget costs about you know this is this is how much it's going to cost this is what we're expecting from people to contribute to the the process and it's getting actual explicit written commitments 
um, you know, ranging from formal legal agreements or less formal memorandum of understanding. It, it will depend on the participants involved. Maybe they have particular requirements. We do have a FIP agreement template that can be used if you wish to go down that route. Uh, it can be used or modified um, if, if you didn't need to or didn't wish to go down a formal legal agreement. But this is key, is to buy in, it's, to, it's, it's essentially, it, people are getting bought into the process. Now, we've gone through everything. These are, this is what needs to happen. This is what needs to, um, the resources required. Everyone's lined up, everyone's gonna do their bit. Once you have got to that stage, you have completed the FIP initiation process. Uh, the, everything is now ready to go into the big step which is the implementation, which is the actual action. So up to this point, it's all been about process. So how do you implement a FIP? Well, quite simply, it's put the work plan into action. Now the work plan will set out exactly what needs to occur. So this is about starting the tasks, keeping other participants uh, brought in and ensuring that they're carrying out their assigned roles and making sure that progress is being monitored. Now, what we advise, we advise all FIPs to try to achieve some sort of result, whether it's a change in tactics, management practice, for example, uh, within one year of announcing the, the launch of the FIP. This really does show that the FIP is actually generating real measurable benefits. Again, we have a, a, a longer document on how to implement a FIP, and the hyperlink is there, which goes into a bit more detail about this. But this is just a summary of what is you know, this, this key step. Now, you know, we mentioned monitoring and reporting on progress. It is absolutely essential that um, FIPS are monitored uh, and managed and progress is reported upon. One of the big challenges in this whole area is a, FIP, uh, a fishery may be red rated, for example, uh, and people are still buying and selling it. Is the challenge for people, well, is, is this greenwashing? Is, is any change actually happening? And the, the way to get around this is constant reporting. You know, regular public reporting, it, it, it assists FIPS and giving them credibility, and it does show that there is genuine progress. Uh, progress should be reported every six months, and it, it, you know it, sometimes there is limited progress that occurs in six months. But it is part of the process to record that you know to know exactly what was happening, whether it was good or bad, so everyone who is interested can view that information. FIP progress is measured by two things. One is the phase of which the FIP is in, and this used to be just what we looked at. Uh, but also now we're looking at the frequency at which improvements are happening. We have got a new document um, which, which goes into a lot more detail uh, about how this, the, the actual steps or the metrics involved in this. And I put the link there. But what I've done on the next two slides is just give an overview of that. The first uh, measure is the phase of the FIP. And you can see that there's some overlap here with um, the process I've just gone through. So you have the FIP development, which is... Uh, actually doing the assessment of the environmental performance. So if you were just doing a fishery um, evaluation at this point, that you could say you're in a phase one, then you have the launch, uh, then you have the actual implementation. So this is the stage we've got to here, phase three, yeah. implementation. So the activities in the work plan are actually starting to go. So this is the kind of the first real step of um, a FIP working in the real world. Phase four, is when you're seeing improvements in fishing practices or management. Um, this, is, uh, this is regulatory policy change or regulatory action to improve the fishing or an actual fishing practice change. So right, we're, we're going to swap the gear types from this to that, for example. Um, there is actually uh, some metrics there for a, a, an increasing fish sc source scores, one, two, and three, um, or BMT scores in the following MSC criteria. So we actually specified um, a bit more detail about what what you'd be required to get to a phase four. Phase five is where you actually see improvements on the water. So you've implemented the changes in fishing practice or fisheries management in phase five. So we're actually seeing real on the water changes. The second part of the measure is the frequency at which improvements are happening. Now they, there's an A to an E scale here. Uh, in the document uh, that I put the hyperlink on two slides back, it actually shows you a decision tree of how you get to these. But it, just for you know your overview here, you can see a, a stage A, you know, a comprehensive bit that has achieved stage four or five progress in the last five months. So, you know, maybe you've actually made a there's a change to the fishing gear. You might not have seen the changes on the water, but you have got to a, a, a some sort of change in fishing gear. For example, in the last twelve months, it means you're making you 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 you're at phase four A 
for example. And what this does is it clearly demonstrates the pace of change as well as the status of where you're at. I won't go through all of them, but you can see, you know, it, it's, it goes down all the way down to you know, not a lot has happened in you know, almost three years. A to C should be seen as, you know, a good measure of progress is happening. As to where you report progress, um, this is reasonably new. Previously, SAP would um, have a, a FIP directory, uh, but this, the SSP FIP directory will be closed in June, so next month. We, we're already partnering with fisheryprogress.org, which is a, a, a multi-NGO tool being coordinated by Fish Choice um, that is building a library of FIPs worldwide with, with a lot of information on them. Um, so all the FIPs are going to be reported on Fishery Progress. Now, the hyperlink there takes you to the tool itself. Um, Albert at Fish Choice is very happy to provide assistance in uploading information. Uh, this is something that we're fully supportive of. And um, the, the guys at uh, Fish Choice who are operating the tool have given me some information with the next couple of slides on the tool itself. This is um, the home page. Uh, the, the little snapshot on the right. Uh, what is it? It's uh, this is it's a one-stop shop for information about FIPS. So this is where you know all the key NGOs working on FIPS are using this tool now. Um, the number of uh, profiles are increasing. Um, you know, all FIPS must report every six months. This measures all FIPS against the same yardstick. It's open access. If you register, you get more access. And the reason for the registration is just keeping an eye on metrics, for example, and, and making sure that uh, people have access to uploading things. Um, the information is there is reviewed independently as well. So this is the sort of the top of the home page, and you can see, uh, you know, I've, I've added some uh, tabs here. You can see what uh, so if we take the, the one of the FIP directory, this is enable you to search. For FIPS, if you're looking for uh, a FIP to see what progress is being made, or you're looking to get some information, you can do a search there. There is a help page on the how to use this site. You can log in um, via my account, uh, and that enables you to actually input information on the FIPs you're involved in. Uh, and again, add or update a FIP is, how you, is your gateway to doing that. page. Uh, again, another search for the FIPS, uh, some information about uh, who's involved in the tool, and some links to some FIP resources, uh, including the uh, Marine Stewardship Council benchmarking and tracking tool, for example, the CAS uh, Conservation Alliance guidelines. And that this is something that can be uh, included. This will be built on as, as time goes by. This is an example of a, uh, a Mahi uh, from Ecuador FIP. Um, on the left, you can see an overview of what it is. You can see a, a description of the FIP, the objectives, and you can see here, this is a comprehensive FIP, so it's seeking um, a, a condition-free pass of MSC as the, as the end goal. Also gives you information on the, its stage five. We're actually seeing, excuse me, improvements on the water. On the right, you'll actually get a, a snapshot of the performance. You can see the FIP is working on all 28 indicators, which is correct because it is a comprehensive FIP. And 57% are green or, or, or the show positive performance. Uh, the actions progress shows you uh, how much how, the progression towards the, the outstanding actions. And you can see at the bottom here the FIP progress rating. Uh, this is using the, the system I've just told you about. This one is A. So you can see in the last 12 months, um, there's been, as you can see at stage five, there's improvements on the water. And this has occurred in the last 12 months. So you can see this, the progress is, this is a stage 5A. So it's a good fit to be looking at. So, um, right at the summary page, <laughs> this presentation you, you know, is aimed to assist you in leading you through the, the FIT process. We do have a resource page that uh, I've been hyperlinking to throughout the presentation. And this is a, a link to the actual page itself, which contains all the toolkits we have and the templates and the uh, the guidance material. There are other resources like this, uh, including the, uh, the Conservation Alliance of Seafood Solutions, WWF and MSC, who have, who have similar levels of assistance and guidance. But you will see, if you go into them, that the approach is the same. Uh, and this is no um, surprise. You know, we have been working very closely together to, to make sure that um, 
there are not 101 different ways of doing a FIP. You see the fishery progress is that, you know, the uh, standardized way of reporting progress now. There are different ways of getting in, on board with a FIP, but how to do it and the stages are, are all the same. It's the same approach across these organizations. So hopefully that makes sort of a, a, an easier uh, landscape in which to operate. So I will, I will pause here in case anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, or, uh, or any feedback. Hi, a quick question just about the standard. So um, obviously very focused on MSC. I've seen reference to um, Seafood Watch based uh, FIPS. Uh, have you got a view on that, and is that something that uh, SFP supports or, or not? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is, you know, looking at the tuna one. Um, you know, the we're looking at getting MSC certification in the in the tuna realm. In terms of the wider body of um, SFP, I would have to defer to one of my colleagues on that one who've been in the the organisation a little bit longer. I don't know, Brian um, or Alexia, do you have any? Uh, thoughts to add um, no Alexia do you have do you want to maybe make a comment yeah, can you just repeat that question one more? Um, I, I mean I think we, we're kind of referring to a comprehensive FIP as being based on uh, the MSC standards um, but I've had kind of conversations with uh, people around some fisheries where they're talking about a basic seafood watch standard. And I just wondered if that, in, in your view, is, is uh, equally valid and whether that would be, um, you know, still supported by SFP. I think our, that we support both the basic and comprehensive. Um, I know there's some um, individuals who prefer, prefer the comprehensive, but... Um, Right, so if it was based on Seafood Watch standards, you would say it was basic? Yeah, it just rates, it goes into our rating system, so it would be rated a little bit different, um, the progress ratings. Um, it was a basic versus comprehensive, but yeah, we have, um, there's a number of basic FIPs as well. And sometimes, you know, the fishery won't achieve MSC, so they go for the basic FIP instead. Yeah, just purely by definition, and um, the definition of a comprehensive FIP is one that is seeking unconditional MSC pass, so... Um, that that would be a correct assumption that if you were looking at getting a a, a seafood watch green rating, um, you know, without going into the discussions about whether the level of environmental performance was equivalent or higher, it would by definition be a basic fit because it's not going for that MSC. Clear. And then, just in terms of fisheryprogress.org, is that kind of uh, being adopted? truly internationally, so do all the European countries now uh, use that or are they going to um, sort of support that as the tracking process? We're certainly supporting um, the rollout of that internationally and uh, we're looking at getting um, fishery progress uh, team across to the UK to actually talk to people about that. But I understand that uh, all the UK uh, retail partners of SFP are actually using fishery progress at the moment. Right. Great. Thanks. Any other any other feedback or, or questions or is that level of information helpful? Is it is it is is there more you you wish to know? Is there any particular steps that would, would warrant more information? Well, this is Kevin Troy. I had a question. Um, would you be providing this this uh, slide presentation to us in email? I mean, there is a lot of information there, and it, it, it seems really greatly greatly organized, and it's just a lot to to look through and assess before you can really come up with any real hard questions. Um, but I think yes. it's great. I just didn't know if it was going to be available to all of us. It, it will be absolutely. We'll be circulating this around, and it. I, in fact, I think it will be put on. Um, the uh, the SFP website. It, it may this this presentation itself may go on the uh, the tuna uh, web page. Um, it may be adopted uh, by other supp uh, supply chains, but we will email it round to all the um, the SR participants. Thank you. Um, and and with that, one thing I'd just like to follow up with is that 
our organization's role is to help industry catalyze fishery improvement projects. So please do after you've read through it, digested it. If you have issues, questions, concerns, there's a point in the process that you're just not understanding or is is difficult to move forward with, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and let us know. Tom, can you hear me? I can, Michael, yes. Okay, just for everybody's benefit, I completed uh, in partnership with a couple of organizations a pre-assessment on tuna uh, last year. The sum total cost was $15,700. Um, so if that's useful for anybody. Your presentation, excellent. It's probably one of the clearest presentations on FIPS I've seen and it takes a lot of the mystery out of it, so please do put it on the website because I'll certainly use it with uh, people that I'm trying to convince to go into FIPS. Great, thank you very much, Michael, and thank you for that figure. I think it's, it's always helpful to get um, some idea of the cost, and of course on top of that there is gonna be some um, you know, meeting costs and uh, the bits and pieces, but it's good to get a, that kind of ballpark figure. That was the actual cost for the that was the actual cost for the quote unquote bound finished uh, pre assessment. Uh, it didn't include my costs, uh, ancillary costs, costs of travel yeah. to et cetera, et cetera, but just the actual pre assessment document upon which you would base going forward on a FIP or not. And quite often, uh, as it happened in that case, the pre assessment clearly indicated to me that it would have been a foolish move to go forward with the FIP commercially. So that fishery was actually abandoned, the concept of a FIP on that fishery was abandoned due to uh, the results of the pre-assessment. So it's like a market research project. Yeah, absolutely. Any final points from anyone? Okay, if you do have anything, you know, like Brian says, please feel free to drop us a line. Um, I think you've got all of our contact details. Um, so, you know, even if you, you, you've got a question you, you didn't want to raise publicly, do, do not, you know, hesitate to ping us an email. So the, the sort of the, the take home message really is having looked at all this, um, and, and gone through this sort of uh, conceptually, it, it would seem to me that a, a good starting point for a, a, you know an in-depth discussion is the fishery evaluation. And, and as Michael said, if you if you get to that point and you think you know what there, there is a possibility here that action can be taken to um, have a successful FIP, the, the fishery evaluation is key. If everyone involved in the fishery, uh, or, or sorry, I should say the FIP agrees that there are sustainability issues that can be addressed, the improvement work can, can proceed. But then again, if there is disagreement, you know, there is the opportunity to work through to get a consensus. And that consensus could be this, this is just, this fishery is just too far gone, um, which, you know, which is unfortunate if that's the case, or let's work on this maybe, you know, step by step, doing a basic approach first, um, and then proceeding, if we can address this challenge, can we take it into a comprehensive one? So I think the fishery evaluation is the sort of the key point at which you can make a sort of a, a, a real conscious decision on w where you go from. So with, I believe that is the final slide. So um, unless anyone's got any other points to make, I, do, I would like to thank you all very much for your time. I, I do understand how busy you are and, um, you know, I do appreciate that. Uh, we've sent a newsletter round. Um, if you have any feedback about the newsletter, um, again, please feel free to let us know whether you think it's useful, helpful, anything you'd like to see included. That would be, that would be great too. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.
Good luck.